Instagram. Welcome to another H5N1 update. We're going to be talking about that today, about the fact that we're finding H5N1 in cat food, and also the fact that a number of chickens are being called and exactly what that means and how it's done. I'm Dr. Roger Schwelt, co-founder of MedCram.com. Have you ever gotten labs back on your MyChart and don't really know what they meant or what the significance of them were? Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. We have a number of courses on medcram.com that will explain what the CBC means and what the particular labs are in the CBC, what it means if it's high or low. Same with the chemistry, sodium, potassium, et cetera, et cetera. So whether you're a healthcare professional looking for continuing medical education credits or a patient wanting to know more about your condition, join us at medcram.com. As you can see here, there's a number of cat food products which are being recalled because they're finding H5N1 in the food they're feeding to cats, and it's pretty fatal in cats, as we're finding out. There are at least two cats, one in Colorado and one in New York, that had the Savage Pet brand of food, and at least in one of those cases, the cat actually recovered. This is back in November. The San Diego County-based brand distributed the boxes across retailers in California, Colorado, New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington. And the expiratory dates on that go back to November 15 of 2026. So if you go to the FDA website, it'll actually tell you what pet foods have been recalled and for what reason. And so far, the listed ones that we see here are West Coast LLC, DBA West Coast Raw, and Savage Pet. And that was recalled on March 1st and March 15. Here's an article for a study that just came out recently showing that even raw cheese made with milk from dairy cattle infected with bird flu can harbor infectious virus for months and may be a risk to public health, according to a new study from researchers at Cornell University that was funded by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. And the issue there is that the aging process may not inactivate the H5N1 virus. The same group of researchers found that the H5N1 virus remained infectious in refrigerated raw milk for up to eight weeks. And so there seems to be actually a debate about whether or not humans could actually get H5N1 from eating food. It seems as though the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Secretary, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., said that the disease is not passed through food, so you cannot get it. As far as we know, you cannot get it from an egg or milk or meat from an infected animal. But, as this article points out, that's only partially true, as we've just discussed, because cats and other animals have been infected by raw cow's milk and raw pet food, and there have been at least three confirmed human infections in which investigators were unable to determine the source of the person's exposure to the H5N1 virus. The article goes into specifically talking about how they assessed for this risk of raw cheeses, and I'll put a link to this article in the description below. I wanted to spend some time talking about all of these birds that are being killed when just a small amount in the farm comes down with H5N1. It spreads very rapidly, and we're going to talk a little bit about how this happens and what is the result of this. So unfortunately, one of the first signs that you would see if you were a poultry farmer or an egg farmer, I guess you could say, is swelling of the tissue around the eyes and purple discoloration of the comb and wattles. You can see this purple discoloration here, swelling around the eyes. There's a twisting of the head and the neck that occurs. Complete paralysis would be an obvious sign, of course, and swelling around the eyes and twisting of the neck. So let's talk about this. Total, since we've had bird flu, we're talking about 500 million birds that have been killed or what they call culled. That's because of H5N1. This has about a 90% lethality or case fatality rate in terms of chickens. It spreads very, very rapidly. And there's a big difference between how the U.S. deals with this and other countries, for instance, the U.K. So we're going to look at that in terms of how the U.S. and the U.K. deal with this. In the United States, they've called about 166 million chickens, whereas in the U.K., of course, a smaller country, it's about 3 million chickens that have been culled. In the United States, just in the last two months alone, they've done 27 million, or about 9% of all the chickens in the United States. 
when they go to a farm and they decide to kill all the chickens, obviously that farmer is going to lose a lot of their money. And so what happens is the government is actually paying these farmers when their chickens are killed. In the United States alone, just this year, they've paid out about $400 million to farmers. In 2022, in the UK, about 42 million pounds paid off to the farmers. Obviously, they cannot take the meat to market. They cannot use any of the eggs. All of this is a big no-no because it's got H5N1 in it. Since 2021 in the United States, we're talking about $1.1 billion that's been paid out from the government to farmers to get rid of these birds because of the H5N1 risk. How do they actually do it? I found this quite fascinating and couldn't believe it. In the United States, what they simply do is they cut off ventilation. By simply cutting off the ventilation to these indoor large rooms, there's so many chickens that are packed in so closely to each other that the temperature in these buildings goes up to 70 degrees Celsius. That's about 158 degrees Fahrenheit. These chickens literally get fried. And as the temperature in there goes up and up, there is, they believe in these chickens by looking at them, anxiety, fear, and they can actually experience this pain. And this is how they die. The fact that you can simply just cut off the circulation of air to the area that they're in and that they're crowded in so closely that just their body heat would cause them to perish should tell you that perhaps this is maybe not a natural way of dealing with chickens and it may be the reason why we're dealing with H5N1 in the first place. This type of culling is not allowed in the UK. Instead, what they do is they infuse nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide. They cannot breathe. There's no oxygen. These animals become unconscious before they pass away, and it's felt to be more humane. And this is primarily how right now we are stopping the spread of H5N1. There are a few countries around the world that are actually vaccinating their chickens against H5N1. Which ones are getting vaccinations? China, Egypt, and Vietnam are all vaccinating. And as a result of that, we are not allowed to have any imported meat from those countries because of a ban in this country on meat in animals that have been vaccinated. The type of vaccination that we're talking about here in animals is not a sterilizing vaccination, which means that the virus could still get into this population of vaccinated animals, but it would not kill them. So the vaccines prevent morbidity from the virus, but it doesn't prevent infectivity. So it's possible that you could still have the virus going through your population of animals that have been vaccinated and not know it because they're not coming down with diseases. Recently, France started to vaccinate their ducks. And the reason was is because they were losing so many ducks, which was a delicacy. And they started vaccinating against this in ducks. Well, of course, there was a big trade embargo with France because the United States does not want to have any type of meat that is vaccinated. They were able to show that the number of cases went from like 400 down to 10. And so they were successful in reducing the number of infections in their duck population. But that is still a controversy because of the industry with eggs and because of the industry with raising chicken, because chicken is so popular. The only way to supply that market, unless they were going to pay a lot higher prices for either eggs or chickens, is to pack these chickens in. And of course, when you pack these chickens into very small areas, very crowded, you've got to ventilate them, otherwise they'll die. And you also can have this spread of diseases. So the answer to the spread of diseases is to vaccinate. So you're going to have these chickens now that potentially could be vaccinated if that decision is made. Currently, that's not the case in the United States. So here's the article that goes into a lot of this, and I'll put a link for this to the description below. In March of 2022, one of the largest egg farms in the world, Rembrandt Enterprises in Iowa, used ventilation shutdown to kill 5.3 million chickens after it detected an avian influenza case. Workers on the farm described it as roasting the animals alive. The article goes on to say that the Trump administration is now also considering deploying a mass vaccination campaign in U.S. poultry. Although Health and Human Services Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said publicly in an interview with Fox News last week that he opposed the decision. 
I personally think it's an interesting idea in terms of vaccinating animals. And I'm wondering if the reason why we have to do this is because we are raising these animals in a very unnatural way. And I think that we need to reconsider our relationship with animals and what we're doing with them for our benefit. Every action has a consequence and we may be feeling those consequences now. Please leave a comment below, subscribe, turn on notifications and join us at medcram.com.